Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this talk on student perceptions of teacher emoticon usage and assignment feedback and online teaching environments. Um, welcome, my name is Sophia Vanton-Newton and I am an IFP EAP coordinator um, currently at the University of Bristol. Um, so in this paper, I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes about some recent research uh, that I completed last May. So just as we'd gone into lockdown, um, this was part of an MA in Applied Linguistics um, at the University of Birmingham and was born out of my fascination with um, emoticons. So I did the JET programme about 15 years ago and had um, a plethora of emoticons, emoji, memoji on my Japanese keitai at the time. And since then, I've been really interested in how um, emoticons have come more and more into computer mediated communication. Um, and my thinking with this, um, this dissertation was how we could apply and use emoticons, um, getting students to engage with assignment feedback. So this paper is divided into two parts. So the first part will focus on student perceptions of teacher emoticon usage and assignment feedback. So the actual research study um, that I performed um, and the different subsections you can see there. And the second part of the talk uh, will focus on use of emojis in an online teaching environment. So thinking about takeaway ideas for um, us as instructors to use in the online classroom. Let's look at the, um, the following pictures I've got on the screen in front of you. So on the top, uh, top layer, we have um, an emoticon, which is a set of punctuation marks. Uh, so Scott Foreman um, created the first smiley emoticon back in 1982, um, 1982 at Carnegie Mellon University. Then this later was followed by the emoji. So these are the pictograms in the middle layer. And then the, the picture at the bottom is a memoji, so that is a graphical depiction of somebody's identity online. Um, sometimes um, memoji and avatar can be used um, interchangeably, but memoji means like literally a me emoji, so showing a picture of, of oneself. So emojis are common paralinguistic tools um, in nonverbal communication. So we've seen them um, emerge more and more in, in, in this area. They're multifunctional and they're polysemic in nature. So they have multi meanings. Um, so in looking at the literature, Markman and Oshima, uh, 2007, AMA, AMA Globally in uh, 2012, identified the function of um, emojis, emoticons, um, to be a form of punctuation in the formation of sentences. So they're effectively a, a, a grammatical aspect of a sentence. Um, later in Dresner and Herring, 2010, so their um, seminal work, um, they looked at how emoticons are indicators of a text's illocutionary force, so the intended meaning of a sentence. Two um, then looked at emoticons as compensatory markers um, of a social context. And this is really interesting um, given the last year in the COVID situation, um, having lack of a, a social context online, how emoticons have been used um, as paralinguistic tools to show. Um, when there is lack of a body language or other indicators. Um, and then Vandergriff 2013 looked at how um, emoticons had been used in peer review. So as a form, a humorous form of politeness strategy um, for avoidance of disagreement. So how students negotiated constructive feedback using emoticons um, and avoiding offence um, online. So let's look at the existing uh, literature regarding emoticon usage um, in computer mediated communication and also in assignment um, feedback. So two um, in 2001, McKinney and Roberts in 2004 looked at how they helped to build online digital, digital communities in an online course. Um, Crone in 2004 looked at the significant difference of opinion amongst um, different age groups, finding that there was a tendency amongst older people to um, not to accept emoticon usage, um, with younger people being slightly more accepting of, um, of that usage in CMC. Uh, controversially, now that, that study seems to uh, indicate that that view is a bit out of date. Um, and that um, older and younger generations negotiate a new emoticon language together and co-construct 
um, that vocabulary together. Um, so that's that's quite interesting. Um, Raw Cattell and Garrison Anderson and Archer look at how emoticons can be used um, to improve a feeling of social presence online. So in their community of inquiry model and how they can be used as a gauge of effective or emotional expression. Um, Forsyth and Johnson in 2017 looked at the most, the two most important or important aspects of receiving feedback um, to be accessibility and the emotional aspect of receiving feedback. So these are two um, beliefs that really resonate with me, particularly the emotional aspect of receiving feedback. So I think we've got to be really careful of that and the person receiving the feedback so they engage with it um, and, and, and they react positively to that feedback. So accessibility, meaning um, how, practic how practically students can actually access that feedback. Uh, Moffat, Padgett and Grieve um, in 2020 looked at how instructors can use positively valenced emoticons to inject a fun warmth and emotionality into written feedback online, um, online feedback rather, uh, without sacrificing the quality or the professional integrity of, of the feedback. Um, and lastly, something I'm going to talk about more in more detail later is um, Doiron um, in 2018 and also in 2016. Um, he co-constructed um, a glossary of emoticons um, with his learners and then the learners used um, those emoticons in peer review tasks. The four main research questions um, in the study relate to, um, is it appropriate for university uh, tutors to use emoticons in written assignment feedback? That was the central question. Um, and if so, uh, what might be some implications for the use of emoticons in pedagogic feedback? So in terms of the HE environment, where do we go next with this? Um, third one was, does the presence of emoticons in individual written assignment feedback comments have an effect on how the tutor feedback comments are understood by the feedback recipient? And the fourth one is, what, what is the, the very nature of the relationship between uh, written feedback and emoticons? So in terms of the research methodology, um, I used a mixed methods approach um, obtaining quantitative data and qualitative data. My um, sample group was 18 students, so fairly small um, sample group in total. I was intending for it to be slightly larger, um, but due to it being quite a, a busy um, time in the term, I didn't quite get the number of responses back um, that I had wished for. Um, in terms of the um, the setup of, of the um, of the study. So I um, created a, a fake student essay and then um, inserted feedback comments and commented on that essay um, using feedback comments with emoticons, which I sent to one half of the students. And then um, it contained feedback comments without emoticons, which I sent to a different um, group of students as I wanted to, to compare and contrast the responses. Um, the students were then sent a survey monkey questionnaire of, of approximately 10 questions. Um, so they were asked questions about how they felt about the appropriacy of emoticon usage, um, marker perception, um, marking quality, uh, marking integrity, um, and a few, a few other questions relating to the nature of the, the feedback comments um, and the relationship between the feedback comments and the emoticons. In, um, in terms of the research participants, um, they came from the International Foundation Programme, um, undergraduate study, so credit bearing in sessional model, um, modules and also postgraduate um, modules as well. So they, they came from the students came from different age groups and subject disciplines. Um, after being exposed to um, the essay and the assignment feedback with or without emoticons, um, I then asked five of the students to take part in a semi-structured guided conversation. So I specifically chose five students who had been exposed to emoticons and asked them um, in, in more um, quite, quite a lengthy guided conversation and asked them in more detail what they had thought about the feedback comments and the different emoticons that they'd seen in that feedback. So then the results were, um, were analysed using Searle's Speech Act theory so thinking about analysing the intended elocutionary force of the comments and what students had said about that in the guided conversations and then used um, Cress and Van Leeuwen's um, theory of multimodality 
So looking at discourse, design, production and distribution. So thinking about those four elements as, as a lens through which to analyse the, the guided conversations as well. So I thought quite carefully about the, the different emoticons I wanted to use um, in the, the feedback comments. And in the end, I chose four. So I went for um, mostly positively uh, valenced emoticons. So I adopted the smiley. Um, so this the intended meaning being um, to acknowledge good work um, in the student's um, submission and something that should be reapplied um, and replicated in future work. I wanted to use the scratching chin face as well to encourage reflection and to communicate that something is unclear or, or unsure to the reader um, and it needs the writer to rethink it. I used the academic face. I felt this one was very appropriate in an academic environment because students would um, be able to understand that that symbol with the mortarboard. Um, so that emoji um, was, was being used to um, say what was good academic practice and again, what should be replicated. And I deliberately um, lastly chose quite a dialed up emoticon, the shocked face, I call this one. So to, to um, indicate what was surprising, shocking or controversial and that um, the writer needs to rethink it. Um, so I wanted particularly um, to see how students reacted to um, perhaps a more negatively valenced um, emoticon as previous literature had talked about just use of positively uh, valenced emoticons. The results of the, of the study um, were positive. So a small majority of the students surveyed felt it was appropriate to use emoticons in feedback. So 10 out of the 18 students said that they felt it was appropriate and that was surveying students from both the control group um, and those who had been exposed to emoticons. Um, where they felt it was particularly useful was in strengthening the feedback message, so dialing up that feedback message. Um, they, they found it helped to reduce the transactional distance between teachers and learners. Um, and that um, what, one thing I found particularly um, interesting was they enjoyed seeing positive teacher emotions about their own work. So that's kind of um, helping them to form a relationship with their students and reduce that, that transactional distance or that power distance relationship, which is naturally there in an HE environment. Uh, one student felt very strongly that the use of emoticons was inappropriate. Um, and had very strong feelings on that and that they would completely disregard the feedback um, if they received emoticons in that feedback. So important to acknowledge that not all students reacted positively to, um, to the feedback. That was, that was obviously just one student. Um, in terms of the emoticons that they commented on in, in um, the guided conversation, so the smiley and the academic face, they said um, allowed them to understand what was done well in the writing. So they found that useful to know, um, to have that acknowledged and also what they should replicate in their future work. Um, the scratching chin face um, drew attention to the distinction between writer and reader um, and also helped them to understand how to communicate meaning effectively. Um, and one student said to actually um, remind him that there is a reader reading his work as well as him being a writer uh, writing it. Also, some students um, commented that emoticons allow humour and lightness to, um, to come to, to teacher-student interactions. Um, and the use of emoticons didn't compromise the integrity of the teacher or, or the professionalism, but it helped to reduce that transactional distance and, and the teacher-student boundaries. So um, this actually backed up um, previous results found by Moffat, Padgett and Grieve um, in 2020. So what I can further see from, from the results of the study I did last year is it's unclear whether emoticons are helpful in just encouraging and motivating students uh, to engage with feedback um, or if they actually help students to understand the feedback comments themselves. So that, that fourth research question, understanding the nature of the relationship um, between emoticons and feedback comments isn't yet clear. Uh, what is clear is that the students seem to say that they help them to engage with the feedback. Um, one other point that came through quite clearly is when too many emoticons are used, it appeared to undermine the student's perception of the teacher, their professionalism. Um, some students reporting that they found um, emoticon use uh, patronising um, or actually amusing um, at some stages as well in, in more of a negative way. 
So let's have a think about these results and discuss them in more detail. So what this study seems to suggest is that emoticons are helpful in encouraging and motivating students to engage with their feedback comments. So that was exciting for me as a researcher because that had been the original intention of the study to get students to engage further by, by use of these emoticons and emojis. So this um, much uh, just a little bit after um, this dissertation was written, uh, Paget, Moffat and Greaves, so in April of this year, um, they have suggested in their latest work that emoticons can enhance student perceptions of online feedback and also um, perceptions of the instructor without challenging the integrity um, of the feedback given. Um, this builds upon um, the work of their study in 2020, which suggests that instructors can use positively valenced emotions to inject fun, warmth and emotionality into written online feedback, again, without sacrificing that feedback quality um, or the professional integrity of the feedback giver. Um, and this um, grew upon their, their previous work in 2019, um, which indicated that emotion, um, emotions and emoticon usage can change marker perception and make markers appear more extroverted and agreeable, as well as being more open to experience when um, the emoticons were included in credit bearing assignment feedback. To conclude this part of um, the paper um, and the research study, so what the research shows is the power of emoticons to acknowledge positive student work and promote reflection on writing. So thinking about reader and writer, um, the ability to use positively valence emotions in teacher feedback comments to reduce transactional distance and that power relationship between teachers and students. Um, and it is an emerging field in com computer mediated communication and now in HE assignment feedback. Um, suggesting that emoticons help to create a greater online social presence um, in a digital online environment. It helps students engage with feedback and that importantly, students enjoy seeing the emotions of their teachers in their assignment feedback. So I've left there a, a, a lovely quote from a student um, through it, who, who gave this quote in the guided conversation. So what you can see there is it helps her to, to start that dialogue about her feedback and start that dialogic feedback loop because of the emoticons that she saw in her feedback. So now we've looked at the, the research, how can we as instructors use emoticons in feedback and in an online teaching session? So I've got five different uh, different um, areas to focus on here. So the first is encouraging reflection on writing and an understanding of what should be replicated about student work. So students do this in future to understand student emotions about their work, which is really important in an online environment to create a greater social presence and what Paget, Moffat and Grieve um, refer to as a sense of realness in an online setting. So students realise there's uh, other students there and teachers there and, and they are interacting uh, as they would be in a real face-to-face um, uh, -face session. Um, to reduce transactional distance and most importantly to add humour and lightness to teacher and student interactions uh, which I think is is very important to um, students feeling like they can approach teachers uh, regarding feedback. So um, practical ideas then that you can take away. So Romig in 2015 co-constructed an emoticon glossary uh, with one of her classes in an HE environment. So here are some of the emoticons that she used to do that um, and the meanings that were co-constructed um, with the class. I particularly like that, that third emoticon down. So Dorin uh, did something similar in 2016, again, looking at what um, positive work could be replicated going forward. So you can see here there's a real focus on um, looking at um, EAP type emoticons. So looking at bibliographic references, website hyperlinks, and particularly here, critical thinking. So I wanted to share with you um, some ideas um, for emoticon usage, three ideas that um, I've been using with my students over the past year, some of you may also have been using. So um, the first one is use of emoticons in chat messaging in online synchronous environments. So I've included here some of my student, uh, students' favourite emoticons 
Um, the penultimate one being quite interesting because initially I thought the student was using it here to indicate that they were cold and maybe their heating wasn't working in their student room. But they later said that this one for them um, meant embarrassment in the session. So that was quite interesting. So it helped me to understand instantly how they were feeling um, and also sometimes how to, for them to understand how he was feeling about their work as well. Um, I used emoticons and emojis, um, sorry, I use those terms interchangeably here, but may, and mainly I'm talking about emojis um, in email communication with students. So looking at encouraging students and um, helping them to feel motivated um, and inspired and, and to express positive emotions. Um, and also we talked about use of um, emojis and avatars. So when students didn't feel comfortable with using a, a, a photo in their profile, um, how they could create a memoji or an avatar. OK, so I hope this, um, this talk um, has helped us to realise the importance of using emoticons in assignment feedback and also in an online um, setting. Um, so it, the, the main ways being to reduce transactional distance, to increase those feelings of online social presence um, and also most importantly um, for getting students to engage with feedback. Um, I hope the latter part of the talk has given you some ideas in, in how to um, incorporate emoticons into feedback in the online setting as well. So thank you very much for listening and I very much look forward to the Q&A session um, where we can discuss um, these themes further. Thank you.